What's up guys, welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. In this video, we are taking a look at the running back duo of Duke Johnson and David Johnson in Houston heading into 2020. Going to be a very interesting duo to try to figure out. There's most likely going to be ha some fantasy value to be had here. And I know where the ADP currently has it. And one thing I'll just have to preface everything going into this is we know that Bill O'Brien is not rational. So Sigmund Bloom said it best in, term, in terms of coining the term rational, assumption of rational coaching. We don't have that here because if we did, well, they wouldn't have traded DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson in the first place. But that being said, we kind of have to take out logic and, and normal rationale when we're considering these guys. I'll make my case as to why it doesn't make sense for what I'm expecting to actually happen to happen and then explain why I believe that. So last year, both of these guys had pretty similar stats in consideration of where they finished on the year. Uh, David Johnson did miss three games, uh, one due to the back strain and two due to the, an ankle sprain, but the lingering back issues were definitely noticeable towards the back half of the season. He started out looking okay and slowly degraded as the season went on, and it's not like he's gotten that much younger either. Finished with less than 100 carries, 345 rushing yards, 36 receptions, and 370 receiving yards for six total touchdowns. Good enough for 37th at, in points and 29th in points per game, just above 10, or right, right behind, right under 11, excuse me, 10.9. And then Duke Johnson finished with 83 carries, 410 yards, 44 receptions, 410 receiving yards, and five total touchdowns. So finishing with more fantasy points on the year, but less on average, 9.6 points. Obviously not playing the full 16 games gave David Johnson a little bit more of a boost there. And when we look at their game over game stats, David Johnson started the season out pretty hot. Honestly, he finished in the top six in week one against the poor Lions defense, saw a really poor performance against Baltimore in week two, and then came out with four really strong performances in a row against not the greatest defenses, Carolina, Seattle, Cincinnati, and Atlanta, all bottom barrel defenses, but still was able to put up averaging above 20 fantasy points over that week. Then he suffers the injury against the New York Giants, and at that point, he really had not been the same. He did technically play in week 10 and 11 against Tampa Bay and San Francisco, but he ended up with zero fantasy points on both of those games. So that is a bit depressing knowing that that, I mean, that was bringing his average down as well. So, I mean, to be fair, his average would have been higher had he not touched the field in those games. Uh, had one more decent game against Pittsburgh, and that only happened because he scored another touchdown in that game. But really, once that injury occurred in Week 7, he completely fell off the map. And then everyone knows the story. The Cardinals trade for Kenyon Drake in Week 11. Kenyon Drake takes over and becomes the lead back there. Chase Edmonds had a one week spurt after David Johnson went down and then he got hurt. So it was a myriad of injuries in the Cardinals backfield. So the real question is, do we believe that David Johnson is able to fully recover and regain form? I mean, it's definitely a possibility. It's not like he was burning anyone in the first part of the year. You could see like his yards per carry were below four for the majority of games, even when he was doing really well. The thing that was giving him the boost to his production was the involvement in the passing game. He had 11 targets in week four, nine targets in week three, just heavily involved in the passing game. And this is where, again, going back to our original concept of there isn't a rational coach or, or general manager who, of course, are the same people in, in Houston, but why would you want this same type of asset when you already have a pass-catching asset in Duke Johnson that is effective in his carries, but has never received a high carry load for the majority of his career and is used in the passing game. But Carlos Hyde barely had any production in the passing game. So if we're looking and saying, okay, well, Houston didn't really funnel the ball through throwing the ball to their running backs last year. Obviously losing DeAndre Hopkins is going to switch things up for this team, but you have two assets now that are good in the passing game. So, I would imagine that there'd have to be some kind of a shift with the loss of DeAndre Hopkins and the instability of the top end guys in the receiving game. There 
the Texans are probably going to funnel a lot more through the running backs this year. If you're looking purely at efficiency metrics, when we compare David and Duke Johnson, Duke Johnson pretty much dominates David Johnson in every single metric. Last year, David Johnson with a 14.6% juke rate, whereas Duke had a 252 David Johnson had a 5.5 yards per touch, which wasn't bad, but Duke Johnson had 6.5, which was second best among running backs. David Johnson had a 3.2% breakaway run rate, whereas Duke Johnson had a 7.2% breakaway run rate. But last year, as we've already emphasized, Carlos Hyde, who wasn't nearly as efficient as Duke Johnson, received double the touches. So knowing the pride and arrogance of Bill O'Brien, even though Duke Johnson is arguably the better player at this point in his career, I don't think there's really any reason to anticipate that David Johnson will not get the majority of touches, at least to start the year. So at this point, and it's pretty much baked in their ADP, David Johnson is going between round three and four, and Duke Johnson, you can typically get him you know, between rounds 10 and 12. If David Johnson is truly hurt and he can't play, Duke Johnson is going to be a zero RB wet dream in the double digit rounds because if Duke Johnson actually got a hold of this backfield running alongside Deshaun Watson, he would be an absolute dominant force to be reckoned with in fantasy football, which if he was on a team with a rational coach, I would be I would be touting. And I'm still high on Duke Johnson because he's dirt cheap. And if you draft him and he doesn't do anything for the first couple of weeks, you can drop him. But I don't anticipate them to do the logical thing unless their hand is forced. Essentially, I'm not expecting Duke Johnson to get the touches that he deserves unless David Johnson gets hurt. And I think it's just going to make for a really murky situation. I don't really project the Texans to be a really good team this year. I don't think they're going to be repeating and winning the South, um, even though that is arguably a easier division with the likes of Jacksonville there. I, I do think the Colts are going to have a little bit better of a season, and the Titans are obviously one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now. So we could definitely see a season where the Texans finish third in their own division, and that's not going to bode well for the running game. But if they do funnel a lot of the passing work to the running backs, then it just matters who's getting the majority of the targets. If they split it pretty evenly, you're going to be disappointed with both options. If David Johnson is on the field the entire time, even if he's being inefficient, he'd still be a valuable fantasy asset. So right now we have him projected to get David Johnson to get about 901 rushing yards, 326 receiving yards on 37 catches and nine total touchdowns. So that would put him right smack dab into the RB2 range. Not terrible. I do think he carries a a good bit of risk, but considering what Bill O'Brien paid for him and the way that this offense is going to have to change by necessity with the loss of DeAndre Hopkins, David Johnson could have a pretty productive season. Duke Johnson, we have projected for 548 rushing yards, about the same in terms of receptions, 35 with 305 receiving yards and five total touchdowns. Again, he has the upside of if David Johnson's back is truly just washed, like he's washed as a player, Duke Johnson could very easily step into a role that would finally elevate him to the likelihood of, you know, an RB1, which he could clearly has the talent to do. He just needs the opportunity. So if you're placing your tip on David Johnson, you're you're hoping that they continue to use him even as his efficiency continues to wane year over year and hope that volume wins out. Whereas with Duke Johnson, you're taking the upside chip and saying, if I'm banking on David Johnson either getting hurt or playing so poorly that Duke Johnson finally takes the reins, As much as I think that would be the right move for the Texans, I don't necessarily think it's going to happen. As long as David Johnson is able to carry the ball, they're probably going to keep feeding him. So I'm probably avoiding David Johnson, though, because even if that happens, I don't expect him to be enough of a jump to warrant who you'd have to take him over. Because he's going in that round three and four. I I feel like a, a broken record, and I apologize if I keep saying this, but the receivers in round three and four are so solid I'd much rather grab two running backs in the first couple rounds and then start hammering receiver than I would wasting a pick like on David Johnson when I could be getting a guy like DJ Moore, Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, Odell Beckham, Juju Smith-Schuster. Like it doesn't seem like a winning strategy to be taking David Johnson, a 29-year-old running back with waning inefficiency on a team that could be in a downward trend. 
versus taking a receiver that could be a league winner. So that's my take. I don't know. Do you guys think, I, I, I feel like it, this fantasy community can be pretty split. Um, again, I think Duke Johnson, if you do take a, a lighter running back approach or you start with a lot of receivers and you're going zero running back, I think he has the upside to potentially be a smash play over the course of the season. If David Johnson is to suffer an injury, then Duke Johnson would be thrust into a very dominant role. And that, and that was pretty much where he was last year. Just Carlos Hyde stayed healthy the entire season, so it never came to fruition. But you get a massive discount on him this year going in the double-digit round. So I would take a shot at, at Duke Johnson. This is going to be a chaotic year, and you want players that will be able to thrive in chaos, and I think Duke Johnson could do that for you. So that's my take. Let me know what you guys think. Hit that subscribe button for more, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.